Hey everybody, welcome to Texas 2.5 Barbecue. A couple of weeks ago, I did a really cool experiment on a set of spare ribs. What would a set of spare ribs taste like with absolutely no help? No seasonings or rubs, no sauces, no spritzing, no wrapping, just good old high quality pork spare ribs, fire and smoke. Honestly, I thought they would come out at a C plus or a B minus. They'd be edible, they'd be tasty, but they wouldn't be anything to write home about. But if you remember that video, those babies turned out really good. The color was amazing. They took on that beautiful cherry color. They were juicy. They were delicious. They weren't as good as A plus competition style finished ribs, but they were still amazing. I could have eaten that whole rack just that way without being disappointed. I've decided I'm going to continue on testing different meats. What would they taste like with absolutely no help? And today, it's Tomahawk Ribeye Day. We're going to see what an awesome United States Black Angus beef Tomahawk Ribeye will taste like. With no pepper, no salt, no rubs, no seasoning, no butter, no finishing, just fire and smoke. We're going to do a low and slow reverse sear on the Lone Star Grills 20x42. Check it out. Don't forget that if we hit 100,000 subscribers by June 15, 2020, I'm going to be giving away a brand new Lone Star Grills 20x42 offset smoker with the off-road package. So, share our promotional video. It's the main video on the Texas 2.5 Barbecue channel. Go right there, grab a link. Right now, head out to your Facebook page and share it with your friends. Take it to a barbecue Facebook page. Take it to an online barbecue forum. The more people that find out about this over the next year, the more this can snowball, the bigger it will get. And on June 15, 2020, we hope to give away a brand new Lone Star Grills offset. So thanks for your help. All right, boys and girls, there she is. She is an absolute beauty. 2.11 pounds, USDA choice beautiful tomahawk ribeye. Uh, I'm not going to be hooking up the uh, Maverick XR50 today, so we're going with the old school, nearly decade old technology, the Chef Alarm. One probe, set it and forget it. Simple. Let's get this baby on the smoker. All right, the Eagle has landed. I popped that baby in the freezer uh, for maybe 15 minutes or so. Uh, the reason for that is um, the colder the meat is when it goes on the grill, the longer it will accept smoke. Once it gets up into the 140 to 160 range, I don't know exactly where. I've heard guys say different numbers, so I just play it safe and go with 140. Once it gets there, it won't take any more smoke flavor. And since we're doing this one plain, I want him to get as much smoke flavor as we can. So not only did I chill him good before we put him on, I'm also going to be rolling lower and slower than I normally do today. Now a second ago, our temps were up to 275. That's because we're still with our original fire. It hasn't burned down to a coal bed yet, but uh, it's almost 4 p.m. here, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on. And I will not keep it up in the 275 range. Remember, it's gonna be 25 degrees cooler than whatever the thermometer says, since we're going with the bottom rack. And remember, the way the air flows in this baby uh, the bottom right is actually your cool zone. It, hot air comes in, it goes up, it goes across, down, most of it exits, a little bit swirls back with this new cross flow technology. It's sort of like a convection smoker if you want to think of it that way. So your hottest zone is up here, second hottest zone, third hottest zone over here, and then your cooler zone is right here. Maybe not Maybe don't go right up against the baffle, but right over in here is, is usually your coolest zone. So that's where we're putting her. And uh, once she gets up to 120 or so, I'm going to take her off, put her in tin foil. I'm going to come over here and get this fire rip roaring. We'll put our cooking grate in and uh, we will sear this baby off for our finishing. It's going to be awesome. All right, we're about 25 minutes in and we're at 75 degrees. This LSG has been holding steady like a champ at uh, right there around 265 and uh, which means we're about 240 on the bottom shelf, which is about as high as I want to go. 
Again, uh, trying to do somewhere in the 225 range down there. Um, so 240 is not bad. Trying to get as much smoke as possible on this piece of meat before it hits 120. And uh, I'm happy with our progress. Let's uh, check our fire and then I'll show you the meat. All right, so this baby needs to be stoked. We got a log warming here. A log that is very warm. Let me grab my gloves. Okay, more intelligent to do this with a glove. Let's bring some coals over. Use our little partially burned log to hold this new one up. And that should get going in no time. Let's check the meat. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That oak and cherry that we're using combo is putting some beautiful color on that baby. Uh, probably once I get done videoing, uh, about five more minutes here, I'll probably flip it over. But uh, that baby is looking delicious. Yeah, can't even wait. All right, we're something like 45 minutes in and I actually have lost my fire. That new stick I threw on looked like it started good, but when I went in the house, that baby went out. My coal bed just wasn't quite big enough. I was trying to do it too low and too slow. However, our meat is at 103.6. When I first came out here, it was at 102. It's already climbed two degrees in a couple minutes here. And I'm wondering if we have enough momentum, if I don't open this door, this pit will stay at 225. This pit will stay above 200 for the next 20 minutes at least. Maybe longer. I've never tested that. I bet I can get this meat up to 120 while I go work on starting a chimney and uh, getting a rip-roaring fire going for the sear. So that's what I'm going to do. Look here, we're already up at 104.4. Uh, I'm just going to let this keep climbing on its own, even though we don't have any fire right now. We got plenty of smoke, uh, which I'm actually glad about, because that little log in there is sort of smoldering that went out. I don't know if you can see the smoke. I can see it quite, quite clearly from my vantage point, but maybe, maybe from yours it's hard to see on camera. Anyhow, I'm going to go get a big old chimney going for our sear. And uh, probably here in another 10 minutes or so, I would imagine uh, this meat will be up to, to 120 where we want it. All right, y'all, the timing on this couldn't be better. I just got my full chimney of lump lit and dumped with two new sticks in there. Actually, one of them was already in there, but right about the time we hit 117. So I'm going to pull that tomahawk right now I'm gonna wrap him and uh, let him rest for about 10 or 15 while these logs burn down a little bit oh Billy got some blood coming out that baby is looking beautiful flipped her left the bottom the thermometer on the bottom side and uh, Trying to get you some shade so you can see that awesome dark cherry oak color combo on those edges. That is incredible. And in a couple minutes, that top and bottom are going to be seared off real nice too. Y'all stay tuned. All right, while we're waiting on this firebox and this wood to burn down a little bit, we're going to do some Texas toast on our Lone Star Grills griddle. I got some Texas toast loaf bread from my local High V. Over here I got Texas Steak Dust Seasoning, sent out to me by texasfood.com. Over here I got that Worcestershire Steak Seasoning, also sent out to me by texasfood.com. We're going to see which one tastes better on Texas Toast. These are heavily buttered. Here in a second, I'm going to flip them with my fingers, so I ain't going to video that. Be right back. Side number one looks beautiful. I ain't going to video for very long because I don't want to ruin the buttered side. There they are. I'll show you when they're done. Ladies and gentlemen, Take a look at this Texas toast. Now just tell me that isn't something that you'd like to dive into right about now. Worcestershire steak seasoning, Texas steak dust, beautifully buttered Texas toast. I love it on the griddle. Actually, I, I'm looking at these and 
thinking the consistency is so much better than over open fire. And honestly, that's the same way I feel about smash burgers. Y'all have seen me do them plenty of times on this channel, but there's just, you just cannot beat the griddle for certain kinds of cooking. And I am so glad to be able to have that option on this firebox. That is an awesome benefit. And uh, wow, that is a good looking plate of Texas toast. Can't wait to dive in. But for now, let's sear some steak. All right, we'll see how this sear goes. I kicked the logs off to the left to protect the meat. I think we have enough hot lump coals over there to do the job, especially once grease starts dripping down. But if I find that to not be the case, then I will kick the logs back over and uh, make sure we get a good sear. I'm gonna do this about every 30 or 45 seconds. All right, we're on the final 30 second stretch and I can tell you right now, the color on this baby is incredible. Let me show you. That is beauty. Look at that cherry, beautiful color on that thing. Deep cherry red. Let's get it on the tinfoil. Y'all walk with me. I hope that thing don't fall off because it is tender as all get out. And I just risked it just so y'all could walk over here with me. You're welcome. Just look at the color and the juice on that baby. No seasonings, you can tell right all, all around there. There's no grit, no grain, no seasonings, no salt and pepper. Just bare, beautiful ribeye. And I can't tell if it looks better for you with the sun or with the shade, so I'm giving you a little bit of both. Let's get her inside, rest her, and cut in. All right, y'all, it's time for the cut. Doesn't that thing look awesome? Let's get in here. Cut right along the bone, which I'm gonna eat in a little while. And it's gonna be awesome. Look at the beautiful color on that. Wow. Now, do y'all like secrets? Cause I got a little secret for you. Here it is. So here's what I did. Here was my little secret y'all. Tex Joy Worcestershire Steak Seasoning. I tasted a big old pinch of this. Really interesting, good flavors. Very peppery, very salty, not sweet at all. So if you're looking for a, a no sweet rub, this is a really good one. Let's put some on. Her on super thick since we're only putting her on one side. There we go. That's all we're doing. So I did one side plain, I did one side seasoned, and actually look how much better the non seasoned side looks on color. I don't know if it's coming across as clear on camera as it does in real life, but the non seasoned side is such a richer cherry color than the season side. That's interesting to me. Now I know some of y'all are thinking, well this isn't very scientific. You uh, you put seasoning on half of it. That's gonna taint the whole thing. Well, no it's not. And here's why. If we had dry brined this sucker for six or eight hours and put salt on all sides, put it in the fridge, yeah that flavor would have made it all the way through. But there's no way that throwing a little bit of seasoning on immediately before the grill on one side only, this side, made that big of a difference. It really didn't. Uh, so you saw me split it down the middle. Let's check out the color. Look at that. That looks like prime rib. That is beautiful juice. Just dripping red off of there. I am loving it. Now back to my point. Uh, some of y'all are saying, why didn't you just buy a second tomahawk ribeye and do a taste test that way? Well, here's a hot idea for you. How about you buy me two tomahawk ribeyes next time and I'll do a taste test that way. But uh, I wasn't buying two tomahawk ribeyes. I bought one. So let's get a taste. Here is some of the non-seasoned ribeye. Totally plain, first time in my life I've ever had it this way. 
Get as much of the fat off as possible. Even though I like the fat, I just want to taste the meat. This is a beautiful, juicy piece. Not from the cap, just from the normal part of the ribeye. Let me hold it still for you. That's the inside, and this is the outside. It looks awesome. Mmm. Wow. And for maybe the first time in my life, I just tasted beef with nothing on it. That's good. Beef comes through and smoke comes through awesomely. Honestly, I do miss the salt. Okay, it is better with rub on it. And in a minute we'll taste test. But it is not half bad. And it's some delicious, juicy, tender meat. Let me eat that fat. All right. Now I just cut a piece from the exact same area, sort of the tail area of the ribeye. Seasoned side, inside. I'm gonna go with that seasoned side first. And remember what I was using was this cool Texjoy Worcestershire steak seasoning that texasfood.com sent out to me to try. And I really appreciate them doing that. Oh baby, right away, better. Definitely better with seasoning. Again, that first cut was not bad at all. It was not a C or a D, it was definitely a B. But with that Texjoy on there, that's an A. And if I had done all sides with that Texjoy, that'd be winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's good stuff right there. Now let me taste you the Texas toast. Remember, we put my, uh, my old faithful Texas steak dust on this piece here, which I'm gonna taste first. Oh, that is killer. I did not put the seasonings on super, super heavy. I don't want to oversalt the toast. You just get a hint of salt and garlic in the background. That's all I got on that. Simple rub, nothing too fancy. It's a great SPG base layer, and that is exactly what I tasted. I didn't taste pepper. I tasted salt and garlic, and it was amazing. Let me try one with that Worcestershire rub and see if I get anything different. And again, this Texas toast. Man, it just turned out awesome on that griddle. Here's the Worcestershire. A little saltier and a little more complex because it's trying to be Worcestershire. That's exactly what I'd expect because the Ranch Fixins is basically trying to be an SPG. The Worcestershire is trying to be a little bit more. And that is exactly how that Texas toast turned out. You cannot go wrong with either one of those seasonings on Texas toast. It's the first time I've used the steak dust for that, and it's really good. Love it. Either one of those is good. Hey, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I sure enjoyed making it. Here I am dripping blood all over the, all over the furniture. This was a fun one to make. I might have to repeat this sometime, you know, just for, for science. Anyhow. I hope y'all are having a good dinner tonight too. We're feasting here in Minnesota. Thank you for watching Texas 2.5. Totally plain tomahawk ribeye. You should try it. I might not do the whole thing that way, but if you do half and half like I did, it's definitely worth the experiment. Try it out, see the awesome color that that LSG with some oak and some cherry puts on that beef. Some good flavor. Maybe you'll taste beef by itself for the first time ever too. Smoke on y'all. Take care. So here's the deal. This is the final, final recap, okay? We had dinner, we ate the steak, we thought through some things, and I got a couple more feedback points for you. First of all, the steak was very good, plain. Okay, it was definitely better seasoned. It's always better salted, peppered, rubbed, whatever you want to do. But it was good. It was good plain. It was a nice experience. I'm glad I did it. Um, would I do it on a regular basis? No. Would I do it again? Probably not with a tomahawk ribeye at $13 a pound. Am I going to do the experiment on other cuts of meat and keep the series going? Absolutely, because it's fascinating to me to see 
what plain old meat tastes like with just fire and smoke. Here's the interesting thing. Uh, I said I was going to tell you two things. Number one, my wife made a really great observation. We've done the pork spare ribs totally plain now, and we've done the tomahawk ribeye. Surprise of all surprises, even though the tomahawk ribeye was good, I would adjust my rating to like B minus C plus. Um, even though it was good, the pork spare ribs were actually better plain than the tomahawk ribeye was. Like I would do the pork spare ribs again. They were that good. Um, if we're gonna grade out of like on a hundred point scale, you know, if 100 is absolutely outrageously good competition style ribs, uh, the spare ribs we did in the in the previous video, uh, go check it out. Um, they were probably like an 88 to a 90, which is still a solid grade. The ribeye was probably more in like the 78 to 80 range. Still a passing grade. Definitely still tasty and ate it. But uh, we actually liked the plain spare ribs better, significantly better, than we liked the plain tomahawk ribeye. Uh, to go along with that, number two, uh, I wasn't even thinking about it as I was eating dinner, but looking back on the experience, I've, I was sitting there uh, putting more of that Worcestershire rub from Tex-Mex on the plain side. I took a few more bites plain just to, just to remember what that tasted like and program that into my memory, uh, but I then sprinkled some more Worcestershire rub on the plain steak and ate the rest of it that way. Um, and that was delicious, that rub was really good. But I didn't do that with the ribs a few weeks ago. I didn't put pork rub on them after they were cooked. Like I liked them well enough that even when I had them for leftovers, I think we had them two more times, I ate them plain again because they were good enough. And that just wasn't the case with the tomahawk ribeye. Again, tasty, good experience, glad I did it, but it wasn't as good as the pork ribs and certainly not as good as a a seasoned tomahawk ribeye. So keep that in mind. If you want to do it just for the experience, totally encourage you to do it. If you want to reproduce any of these uh, experiments that I'm doing with plain, just fire, just smoke, I would not do the tomahawk ribeye that way unless you're smoking it though. Uh, unless you're putting some serious heavy oak and cherry. It doesn't have to be oak and cherry, but that was my choice. You put some heavy smoke on whatever you prefer. I wouldn't just grill it plain. I honestly think it wouldn't be very good. I think the smoke helped tremendously with the flavor, um, but there just wasn't enough there without salt and pepper for me to go back and do that experiment again. So if you decide to do it, I wouldn't, especially if you're using a gas grill, don't do a tomahawk ribeye plain on a gas grill. Use charcoal with a ton of wood chunks or else use your offset with real wood if you're gonna do that experiment. The pork ribs, on the other hand, you know, I, I can see you doing that on a Weber Smoky Mountain on a charcoal cooker. Um, maybe not on an electric smoker or a propane smoker, but on a, any normal uh, smoker, I would uh, maybe a pellet grill. You'd get away with that. The Worcestershire rub, I want to say one thing about that. It was really good rub. I don't think it tasted like powdered Worcestershire sauce. Like the Worcestershire wasn't that notable. It just was a deliciously salty, savory, no sweet rub. It was a great rub um, for, I could see using that on any kind of meat, beef, seafood, chicken, pork, whatever. So that's my doubly thought through recap later in the evening. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, we'll see you next time on Texas 2.5. Smoke on.